about a choice. And my concern, and I'll echo the same thing that Kimberly said, is if we want to restart this process without the appropriate staff, then it's really a motion to delay this. And that's, that's basically for the people that are seeing that can't participate, that because of our personal inefficiency or ability to move forward and just see where we are with this. Not personal. Uh, I'll say it again. With what you feel and the people that you represent, then it will delay the process. You have the floor. Sure. Thank you. Followed by Mr. Reed. So I want to say in response to the Bobby Burns, and I'm sorry, I'm going around the room just calling them in order. How long staff has worked and the chair has worked on this? That's much of the problem here, staff and the chair. You have a committee that had, we had more engagement or regular updates or been able to give feedback, or at least if the feedback was taken from the last reparations committee, um, then we would not be here with these disagreements right now. And then to continue to hear every time there is a disagreement with what staff um, has decided that in retaliation, uh, we'll, just hold, we'll just hold up the program. So there is an opportunity to move forward and also not have an exclusive agreement. Again, it's the initial 16 of this project we can take more time to decide on if um, this is the right partner or this is the right um, MOU. So I don't see why it's either a yes, exactly how we said it, or we will, don't know when we can move forward with the program. It seems to be an extreme um, decision that you're putting before us and unfair. Uh, thank you and for that's your it comment. for now. I have, I have uh, and thank you, Mr. Burns. Kimberly Claire is waiting to speak, and unfortunately, I cannot see her hand on my screen. Yes, can can you hear me? We can hear you now, Claire. My apologies for tapping you over. Oh no, that's okay. I was, you know, I, I know it's difficult with the way I've logged in. Um, because we had started this conversation at the last meeting. I did do a little research on some black owned entities that might that had experience that were well thought of, good reputation, strong experience that might be able to provide these services. For example, I'll just tell you one is called Ch Chicago Community Loan Fund, run by a gentleman, Calvin Holmes, who's probably a leader in the nation on this. But I I also, and I know a number of us on the committee have <clears throat> experience with nonprofits. I also am aware that, you know, if we have to start that conversation, approach them, have that, these things take time. These organizations have already allotted time and money to whatever other projects. So I am concerned. I mean, this is kind of a dual thing that we're, um, you know, that we're balancing is the time issue and, uh, you know, what, you know, this desire, which I, I think is very commendable and I share with wanting to um, use, you know, black owned, black run entities um, just uh, on principle and what this project is and being mindful that we are being looked at nationally and quite frankly, internationally as a, as a model and how this is going. So it's what, what we do is important in those details. And I don't think it's necessarily a small detail are important. However, I think we could start these discussions with some of these entities um, and perhaps look at them for further on, maybe with the next 16, if we find out there's gonna be a big time lag or with some of the other um, the economic development or education portion or something like that. So I think um, in a way we have to be sensitive about time, but patient with ourselves that this has come up. And I think, you know, we're kind of caught here because of the time challenge um, that if, if it's not quite ideal, um, you know, that moving forward, that this is something that we'll tweak and look at 
in the in, with the, maybe with the coming disbursements if it's not possible with this one I don't know um but I, I do thank you, Peter, and it's very sad for, for letting us know, and it's very sad um, that we've lost three ancestors in this intervening time period. Um, and it does really drive home the need to be really time efficient with getting this proposal done. But of course, we want to do it properly. Exactly. Claire, thank you so much for your, for your comments. Um, I have a question at this point order. If we could provide a, a, a list of organizations that the committee wanted that. 16, I'm going to tell you right now, this is for the, this MOU is for the first 16. But at the end of the day, capacity wise, we have 122 individuals as ancestors that qualify. And as funding continues to avail itself, you're going to have a capacity issue even with the organizations that you partner with. So you're going to need to expand partnerships at some point in time. And so, but this is going to be a, allow you all to at least have an opportunity to see what has worked and what hasn't worked. So as you are able to then recruit or solicit additional support or additional um, organizations, you have a better understanding of what your ask is. Because my ask, with SEPA was a different ask than what it ended up being because of our continual conversation. So I think this is an opportunity for us to test this, to make sure that what we're doing is working and then you all can continue identifying partnerships outside um, that you want to look at partnering, partnering with and also looking at how to pay those costs because SEPA is doing this again, is it in kind? At some point, there's going to be a cost associated with this implementation as you're getting beyond 16 and into the hundreds who are going to benefit from uh, the, this program. So just think of that as well as you are contemplating future options. Thank you so much, Kimberly. Uh, next, we'll have Council Member Reed. And Council Member Burns, I, I apologize. You're, you're on my second screen. So as soon as Mr. Reed is finished with his questions, we'll get to you. And I want to, again, apologize and thank you for your patience. Thank you, uh, Councilmember Burns, and thank you. Uh, 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 I will, you're always Councilmember Ruth Simmons in my head, but uh, uh, thank you, Rob, as well, uh, for your line of questioning. I have uh, two things, or three things that I, that I want answered. Um, so one, I heard you, and I've heard at uh, a meeting or two ago, uh, Councilmember Braithwaite, you just mentioned that the reason we're going, at least in part, beyond the staff capacity issue and internal issues that, that folks are raising, the reason we're going to a third party uh, vendor, if you will, um, is because we're under the impression that residents won't be taxed if it's from a third party vendor rather than from the city of Minders. Did, did I hear that correctly? I'll let you go through your three questions and then respond at the right. end. So first question is the matter of tax. So Michelle, I uh, will let him ask him I'll ask the... Yeah, if, if I can go one at a time to just keep things that. organized. M Michelle, can you answer that? The next, Mr. Reed, your second question. M Chair Braithwaite, this is my time to ask questions. So so please allow me to ask questions. Uh, so your first question is taxation. Your second question is... While you're thinking about your questions, we can come I, I'm back. I'm not... Yeah, sir, I'm not thinking about my questions. I'm just looking to have my question answered and then move I on to the next question. question. So your second question, or we can go to- I would like the answer to that question. Yeah, I don't need my questions okay. micromanaged, right? Just let okay. me answer my questions. So the second question, or we can come back to you. Council Member Burns, you want to go ahead and take your questions and then we'll come back. 